Film noir encompasses an incredibly wide range of films, characterised by an oppressive atmosphere of menace, pessimism, anxiety and suspicion. Importantly, the protagonists in film noir are normally driven by their past or by their weaknesses to repeat their former mistakes. Over the past 10 years, there has been a dramatic resurgence in films of this style, which we may term neo-noir. Neo-noir has a similar style but with updated themes, content, visual elements and media. Before I get into things, today's video is sponsored by the film Flinch. Flinch is a neo-noir thriller about a young hitman falling for a girl who witnesses him commit a murder. If you want to watch the film or find out more information about it, you can find a link in the video description. Robert Arnett stated that neo-noir has become so formless as a movement, any film featuring a detective or crime qualifies. I would argue that while Arnett has a point, certain films stick out as embodiments of modern neo-noir. Looking back to 1976, Scorsese's cinematic masterpiece Taxi Driver can arguably be seen to drive this resurgence of neo-noir films, blending masterful cinematography of the smoky neon streets and thematically exploring the dark underbelly of New York. The echoes of Taxi Driver can be found in almost every neo-noir film today. Flinch as a small independent film, plays on similarly dark and neon cinematography, nurturing its criminal aesthetic. Its influences can be traced back to other notable neo-noir films. Perhaps the most obvious is Drive from 2011, which oozes visual flair. Flinch comparably alternates between vast sweeping shots over the sprawling city to claustrophobic dark scenes, pushing the viewer inside the grit of the criminal underworld. The film is far from perfect, but its impressive element is its stylistic audacity as an independent film. Indeed, there aren't many films produced on such a small budget that would attempt to emulate iconic neo-noir pictures like Nightcrawler, Drive and Good Time. Good Time's influence is felt throughout Flinch, especially owing to the presence of Buddy Duress. Buddy's entrance into Good Time is perhaps my favourite scene in the film, taking the form of an incredibly gripping monologue and montage that plunges Good Time into new depths, really fleshing out the comedy of errors that leave a character like Ray in the situation he is in, set to head back to jail weeks after his release. Buddy Duress is a breath of fresh air in Flinch, utilising his raw and authentic feel as an actor who lives a life equivalent to the roles he plays, in and out of prison in his personal life. When considering neo-noir and indeed Buddy Duress, the Safdie brothers must be mentioned as a huge drive behind the resurgence of this genre in the last five years. From their tenacious entrance into feature films with their authentic portrayal of heroin addicts living in New York, to their recent mainstream breakthrough with Uncut Gems, the Safdie brothers certainly know how to make a neo-noir film, driven by an atmosphere of menace and anxiety, with characters who are doomed to repeat their past mistakes. Neo-noir is one of my favourite subgenres. Films like Flint should be highly encouraged, showing that independent films can still make a stylistic impact in neo-noir's resurgence. Let me know what your favourite neo-noir film is in the comments below, as there are countless names I haven't mentioned. And, as always, thank you for watching.